Today's guest is the Chief Executive Officer at our Decker's School of Success and Diagnostic Professionals. He teaches people how to get control of their household finances through his seven-week online Zoom course. In this episode, we'll be learning how to turn our dreams and desires into realistic, sorry, we'll be learning how to turn our dreams and desires into reality through goal setting and how we can also achieve financial freedom. Welcome to the show, Howard. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, uh, Toby, from sunny Boca Raton, Florida. That's Love one, life. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me today on this episode of Mirror Podcast. I really enjoy the fact that we are, were able to, you know, connect a little bit before recording, and I'm looking forward to everything that we'll be learning from you in this episode. I'm so excited about this. I would just love us to, you know, kick off from your story from the beginning of the beginning. Like I'm really fascinated by your story of how you grew up in a middle um, income family. You grew up in a middle income family and how your father developed a plan that made him a multimillionaire. So can you, can you share this story with me and can you share this plan that turned the life of your family around? Sure. Um, basically, well, first of all, today uh, I'm retired. I'm semi-retired. Um, I am a multimillionaire today. I started out like the majority of the people. You know, I'm going to make references a lot to the United States. I know mm. you have a worldwide audience, mm. but I don't know the world like you do. I know the United States. So I started out like the majority of the people in the United States, lower to middle income. Okay, I grew up in a real small house in Detroit, Michigan, two bedroom home uh, with six of us, my mom and dad, and four, I had four sisters at the time. And my dad was a tool and die worker. He worked his butt off in a factory his whole life from age 20 to 55. Mm -hmm. And when I was about three, my dad moved me and moved our family to the suburbs of Detroit. It was a Northern area on a lake and it really kind of changed my life because two streets down is where the wealthy people that had already made it <clears throat> live. Yeah. And the wealthy people <clears throat> all had a lot of kids. Mm. So I spent most of my time, it's called the island, in all of those beautiful homes. And one of the things I noticed is that my friends had every toy you could imagine. Mm -hmm. I didn't. And when I would go to my dad and say, man, can I get a mini bike? He'd say, no, son, but, you know, you go get a job or figure out how to make money and you can buy your own mini bike. Yeah. So that's from a very young age, like I, at age 13, I had paper routes. Um, I would connect, collect night crawlers at night whenever it rained. They'd come out, be over the street. I'd put them in cups and then I'd get up at five. This is 13. Mm -hmm. I'd get up at five in the morning and I'd go to the end of the street where all the fishermen were driving by and I would sell my night crawlers. Oh, so um, that's kind of when I started realizing what I could do with a little bit of money. I bought my own mini bike and then I started doing my paper out on my mini bike. Mm -hmm. And um, so... Um, I eventually did the same thing as my dad did. And I started working in a factory at 18 and at 18, <clears throat> um, I actually cut off my finger in the factory. Um, my dad kept wanting me to go to college and I kept saying, no, I want to be like you, dad. I want to work in a factory. And when I cut this finger off, it literally woke me up to life. And I thought to myself, Oh, my God. And from there, I went to college. Um, I graduated five years later. Uh, after I graduated, and the, the, one of the biggest things that changed my life and put me on the trajectory to success, mm. I call it the American dream. You might call it the German dream or the whatever the dream, the name of it is. Yeah. It's a book that I read called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Mm. And if you notice, that book is right always over my shoulder. Yeah. Because the first thing I recommend to anybody, whether it's a student or whether it's a friend that comes up to me and says, how did you become a multimillionaire? 
the first thing I want you to do is buy this book called Think and Grow Rich. Mm. I read that thing 10 times and outlined it right out of college. And I still have that outline with me today. And I still read that outline today, even at my age. And um, the book will actually teach you how to get control of your mind and teach you how to focus your life so that you can actually achieve anything that you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. So um, my dad taught me something in my teens that I really didn't pay attention to until my 30s. My dad had a concept where 10% of every one of his paychecks, he would take that money mm -hmm. and he would invest it in the stock market. Mm -hmm. And he did that every paycheck. Now, they didn't have computers back then, obviously. So he had to physically take it and give it to uh, somebody to invest it for him. Yeah. <laughs> he did that. My dad worked at Chrysler Corporation in a factory from 20 to 35. That's 35 years. He saved a total of $122,000 mm. and invested it. <clears throat> Today, it's worth $3 million. Mm. He hasn't worked in 40 years. He's 96 today. And his investment sent him $85,000 a year. And he hasn't worked in 40 years. Wow. So the concept is most people think that they can't be a millionaire because mm -hmm. they're going to they have to save a million dollars. Mm -hmm. They don't have to save a million dollars. What they need to do is learn how to get control of the little bit of money that's coming in the household how to change a few things and then set up an automatic plan that takes a little bit of money out of your checkbook every month. Yeah. It goes into a brokerage account. Now yeah. you mentioned that I have an online class. Yeah. I teach how to do all this in my class. And when people go through my course, when they're done, their financial freedom plan is set up and running. So mm -hmm. my dad did that for 35 years and then he didn't do another thing. That 122,000 has grown to $3 million and he has it in a brokerage account. Yeah. So <clears throat> I went on and I didn't listen to my dad. I didn't save 10%. I was just like 80% of Americans. I was living paycheck to paycheck in my twenties and thirties. Mm. Um, my, I was starting businesses and I was now making hundred grand a year and 200 grand a year and 300 grand a year. But I was buying stuff. I wasn't doing what my dad was doing. And then in my late 30s, my wife was complaining that we didn't have anything saved for the future. And I was always saying, well, when I sell the company, we'll be wealthy. Mm. And then I started thinking, holy smoke, she's right. What if I can't sell the company? What if I go bankrupt? I'll be broke. So I started my plan in my late 30s. Same thing my dad was doing. 10 to 20% of all my income was doing what he did, but it was all automatic. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I was broke at the end of every month. I was making 300 grand a year. And I, well, I would go to my way. I feel like I'm broke, but then I'd look at my investments and I'd see them growing. Mm -hmm. So that's basically my story. I started out low income and I just read a book. They could grow rich. It put me on the right path in life. And then I paid attention and, and, you know, I, I, all of a sudden I was retired and I was bored out of my tree. So I decided I was going to put a course together to teach people who didn't have a dad like mine, Yeah. because, you know, most people don't have dads like mine. Dads are just as confused about finances as 80% of the people are. Of course. Yeah. So I was fortunate. So what I'm doing now is I have a big RV. I'm traveling the United States of America. I'm going to small town America and I'm teaching a lot of people how to set up their financial freedom plans. I even, I even in my class, I show them how to almost everybody has 200 to $500 a month that they could be investing and they don't know it. Wow. So that's okay. because go ahead. Yeah, so I'm just curious to know. I would love you to you know, teach me about this plan. Like, how can we, you know, set realistic financial plans for our lives? How can we set, you know, achievable financial goals for ourselves from, you know, your, your teachings and from your um, online courses? Can you share some of these um, insights or, yeah, teachings with us? 
Yeah, well, <clears throat> you know, it's, uh, it's, you know, a lot of people, whenever I say I can save them two to five, I've shown them how to find two to $500 a month. Mm. I don't know what it's like in Germany, but let me tell you how it is in the United States of America. Starbucks is one of the most successful companies in the United States of America. Mm. Do they have Starbucks out there? Yes. yes yeah, okay. Americans love Starbucks and some of them go there four times a week and they get their $5 cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. So I challenge them because one of my modules is we go over budgeting. I developed a one page budget mm -hmm. so that people can see where their money is and, and where it's going. This is what I challenge them. I says, look, it, if you're going to Starbucks five days a week, you're only spending $5 each time, which doesn't seem like a lot of money, mm -hmm. but five days a week, four weeks out of the month, that's a hundred dollars a month that you're giving to Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Now, what I want you to do, I don't want to take away your luxury because I know you love Starbucks. I want you to, I want you to tell me you're only going to go twice a week. It's actually two and a half, but mm -hmm. twice a week. And then instead of giving Starbucks $100 a month, you're only going to give them $50 a month. Mm. And then we're going to set up a program that automatically takes that other $50 that you were giving to Starbucks, but now you're going to give it to yourself. Mm. You're going to pay, this is paying yourself first. Yeah. And we're going to open up a brokerage account and we're going to invest them in low risk index funds that average 10% growth, mm. that $50 will double every 7.2 years. And let me give you an example. In 30 years, $50 will grow to, you will have put in 18,000. Yeah. It'll be worth 114,000. Mm -hmm. In 40 years, you will have put in 24,000, $50, you know, a month. Yeah it'll be worth $318,000. So that's one little way, by the way, in 30 years, that $50 a month will grow to $113,000. Mm -hmm. Then I do the same thing with a car payment. Americans are crazy. They go into a car dealership and the salesman shows them, well, can you afford 600 a month? Yeah, I can afford 600 a month. Mm -hmm. And you don't know how many of my students have car payments of four fifty to eight nine hundred dollars a month, wow. and when I ask them why, because I can, mm. and it's like so I challenge them. Let's say somebody has a six hundred and fifty dollar a month car payment. This is what I tell them: Do you want to be financially free one day? This is what I want you to do. I want you to sell that car, and I want you to buy. You can be another new car if that's what you want but I want your payment to only be three twenty-five a month. Mm. You were giving the bank 650 a month. Yeah. Now you're going to take that other 325. We're going to set it up. So it goes to you. Mm. That will be worth over $700,000 in 30 years. Yes. So that's what I teach people. And I teach them how to set it up automatically mm. in my class. I teach them about, index funds. I teach them about, you know, how money grows. Mm -hmm. You don't understand. We don't teach finances. We don't teach financial freedom to our kids. We don't even teach it in college. Mm -hmm. People, you know, you, you wonder why 80%, you know, 75 to 80% of the people in America are living paycheck to paycheck. I don't care if they're making $50,000 a year. 80% of our living paycheck to paycheck. I don't care if they're earning 200,000 a year. 80% of them are living paycheck to paycheck, just like I was in my 30s. Yeah, yes. You know, because what happens as soon as you start making more money, mm -hmm. you get a bigger house, you get a nicer car, you get more toys. Mm -hmm. And so what I try to teach people is, is 70% of us, are going to make age 65. Mm -hmm. The rest of us are going to die. Okay. Sorry to say, but 70% of us are going to be 65. Mm -hmm. So you have a 70% chance that one day you're going to be 65 years old. Mm 
You were either going to have a lot of stuff that's not worth a whole heck of a lot of money, Mm -hmm. or you're going to have millions of dollars that you can live off of. And it's the things that you do today. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking a lot of money. I'm talking about if if somebody says they don't have a lot of money, start with $10 a month. Mm -hmm. Start with $50 a month, $100 a month, $500 a month, $1,000 a month. Obviously, the more you put in, the the faster it's going to get to a million dollars. Now, for entrepreneurs, they can put it on hyperdrive. For people who own their own businesses, they can afford to put in more than the person who has a normal job. But I normally teach people who have normal jobs. Yes. So So, so, someone out there is very curious. So I personally am also very curious to know where and how to put my money into an investment in, in order to, you know, get profit out of it later in the future. Like, you, I know you, you teach on these online courses about how to do this, but is it possible for you to share with us some systems that we could put into place um, in order to, you know, save our money somewhere? <coughs> where, where are we investing our money into and how are we going to get the profit? How can we manage it in a way that we'll be able to, you know, yeah. be sure of getting the profits at the end of the day? Oh, oh absolutely. Actually, in the course, I... You know, we got to, we, it, when, when a person goes through the course, when they're done, it's set up. But let mm. me tell you how it works. Basically, all you are doing is, first of all, understanding how much money's coming in the house and where it's going. Mm. Okay. And then you're massaging that. But what we're looking for is a way to find, let's say, $50 a month. Mm-hmm. We need a person to commit to a number. I don't care what the number is and at least get started. Mm. The brokerage houses now today make it so easy. For instance, I love Fidelity Investment, Fidelity Brokerage House, but there's a ton of them. Most of my students, I will tell them, I would prefer you go to Fidelity because I'm pretty good at it. I've been with Fidelity for 30 some years Mm. and I know the ins and outs of their portal. Mm. They all have different portals. So what the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a brokerage account. If somebody's in the United States, we're also going to set up a Roth IRA account. Mm. And what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to tell Fidelity, and we do this right in Fidelity. Okay, we say, and by the way, nobody makes money on you. You own it 100%. The only person that makes money on your investments, our index funds have small fees. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like index funds because they're very small. So you are, there's nothing to managing it because what an index fund is, an index fund is a basket of 500, Standard and Poor 500 is is the superstar of index funds. It's a basket of 500 of the most successful companies in America. Amazons, Google, Tesla, Microsoft, Amazon, all of these companies, what we're doing is investing in an index fund that has a little piece of every one of those companies. So as those companies are growing, our investments are growing and it averages 10% growth. My goal, is to teach people how to get 10% on their money. And the reason is there's a big difference in 30 years between getting 7% and 10% Mm. as far as what you have at the end. It's amazing. It's like double the the difference. So basically that's the concept. They don't have to be financially literate. They just need to understand that if they want to be financially free, they got to cut back a little bit over here Mm -hmm. so they can free up more money out of their checkbook. And then we set it up one time. Fidelity Mm -hmm. says, how much do you want to invest in this account each month? $50. Mm -hmm. Where do you want us to take it from? I give them my checking account Mm -hmm. number. Mm -hmm. And I tell they, then they say, what date do you want us to take it every month? And they take it. So every month now, All you got to do is go to work and live. This all works in the background. Yeah. Every month, it takes that money. It just keeps going like this every month. 
Mm. And as that money's sitting in there, it's growing and growing and growing. I, you know, I, if somebody could do 500 a month, yes. in, they will have, in 30 years, they will have invested $180,000 mm -hmm. into their financial freedom fund. Yeah. It will be worth $1.139 million. Wow. 500 a month. Mm -hmm. So the sooner we start, if I love to try to get kids at 20 to start this, most of them aren't ready. Most of my students are in their late 20s, 30s, and 40s. Okay, because they've all of a sudden realized, holy smokes, <laughs> I'm making all this money. Where's it going? Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, that's basically it. It's, it's not rocket science. They don't need to be financial experts. I don't teach puts, calls, all that fancy financial stuff that who the heck wants to learn that stuff <laughs> you know i'm teaching people how to do a plan in the background like mm -hmm. i did yes. and like my dad did mm -hmm. even though my dad had to physically take the money mm -hmm. get in his car and drive it to the branch mm -hmm. today we can take a damn photograph of the check and yeah. say invest it over here it's yeah. like so it simple. is so easy yeah to easy. become financially free today yes so um as a as a financial sorry as if as a financial freedom coach what would be your definition for um financial freedom and financial independence well each individual person is going to come up with their own definition mm. you know uh, one definition is the bill the ability to one day do what i want when i want and how i want yeah. Okay. Um, my definition was when I wrote, when I was broke, um, I wrote, um, I wanted to be in a position where I had it. And this is how I wrote it. I have enough money in storage that can pay for my lifestyle. And I no longer have to work to pay the bills. I work to help people. Mm -hmm. And I wrote that 35 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, so um, financial freedom is the freedom to do the things that you really want to do in life. Yeah. You know, most of us are working for survival. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're working to feed our family. We're working to, uh, and we're spending a lot of time working. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't, I'm financially free today. I've chosen to buy a big motor home. I put a beautiful office in it. I have three big screens. When, when I travel the road, when I'm traveling, and I'll probably be leaving in April again, I'm going to go out west. I'm a solo traveler, and I love it. You know, my definition of financial freedom was to be able to help people and have enough money coming in for my investment. The way I help people, yeah, I have a ball traveling the country. I play pickleball every morning for two or three hours. Mm. I meet a lot of people in every city I go and do through pickleball. And then I do podcasts. I'm guests on a lot of people's podcasts like this. Yeah. And then I, part of my program is people have the ability to schedule a Calendly Zoom meeting with me mm. and I'll help them. You know, if they get confused in a section, yeah. all they got to do is click a button and I'll help them. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's just you have to create your own definition of financial freedom. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning of the course, everybody does that. Mm -hmm. And then that's what we're working for in our financial freedom plan. Yeah. So that's what makes it work to take this hundred dollars a month and put it over here. Now you know why you're doing it. Mm. You set a goal. Okay, your goal is I want to be financially free so that I can do this. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Yes. And now we're going to put this plan together and we're just going to automatic. Mm. And you're going to be watching it. The years are going to go by yeah. and you're going to see it doubling. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're going to have, you're going to have 20 grand. All of a sudden, you're going to have 40 grand. Then you're going to have 80. Then it's going to double in seven years. You're going to have 160. Mm -hmm. Then it's going to double. You're going to have 320. 
then 640, then a million two. I mean, it, and it just keeps going. And you see this and it's so damn exciting. Yes. I mean, that, so that sounds so wonderful and so interesting. Mm -hmm. And from your course also, I would love to ask more questions because I know you, you teach people how to get control of their household finances. And this right. is very this is very essential and important. And from what you from the discussion or from the story already, uh, you mentioned you know like cutting costs, like reducing the amount you spend on, in Starbucks, for example, from hundred dollars to fifty dollars, for example. So are there like some other ways we could you know get control of our of our household finances? Are there some <coughs> other things we could look into in order to reduce the costs so that we have more money to invest um, into a right. business or into a long term wow. investment? In module one and two, I mm. go over budgeting. And, and the reason I do this, um, I told you I developed a one page plug and play budget. Even if somebody doesn't like spreadsheets, all they got to do is put in the numbers and it calculates everything for them. Mm. So once we have built our budget, once we, this is how much we make, this is how much the government takes, this is what my spendable money is each month. This is where it's going. All of a sudden, when you get to the bottom, there's either money left over mm -hmm. or you're in the negative. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the negative, then what we do is we got to go look at each place that we're spending the money. So now instead of spending 100 on this, we're going to only spend 50. And until we get it to equal zero. <clears throat> now, another exercise in getting control and so that we have enough money to do this yeah. is now what I want you to do is I want you to go back into the budget and I want to increase every one of those lines mm. vacation instead of $50 a month. I want you to do 200 a month instead of this. I want you to beef it up to from hundred to 200. Mm. And so now you're looking at this, you're looking at how much money's coming in mm -hmm. and now you're down $8,000, meaning you're spending $8,000 more than you have coming in. Yeah. So now what we talk about is there's a couple options. You are in charge of your lifestyle, nobody else. Okay. Yeah. You are the one who determines what you can and can't do. Mm. So if you want to live this lifestyle, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to your boss and I want you to tell your boss, we just did our family budget. I need to make more money. Now, before you do that, mm -hmm. and this is, you get this right out of Think and Grow Rich, you need to learn how to give more service than what you're paid for. You need to learn how to go the extra mile mm -hmm. in everything that you do in life. And if you do, people will recognize you and it will be easy to get those raises. So let's assume that you're the go the extra mile person. Believe me, if you're going the extra mile and you're doing more than your peers, mm -hmm. your bosses are going to know it. Anybody who owns a business is looking for superstars. Yeah. They're not looking for mediocrity. Mm -hmm. They're looking for superstars. So what I want you to do is I want you to go into your boss and say, look it. You know, I've always been a go the extra mile person. I love working here. I love you. I love working for you. I have to make more money. I need to make $8,000 more a year. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to do, I'm willing, on, I'm willing to take on more tasks, more responsibility. And I promise you, you give me more responsibility. I'm going to give you what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. He's either going to say yes or no. If he says, I'll give you 25 cents an hour. <laughs> okay. First of all, you know, that ain't going to cut it. So no. in the back of your head, you got to take what you can get. And now you have to make the decision. I don't care how much you love that job. You start looking in the background for a job that is willing to pay you whatever you're making plus eight grand. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the reason why I'm saying A is in your budget, the very first expense you are going to pay every month is to your financial freedom plan. Yeah. We're automatically taking 10% and it's going into your financial freedom plan. So now you know if you got that eight grand a month, 
that eight grand a month, you can not only live the lifestyle of all these expenses, mm. but in those expenses is 10% of whatever you are making going out here. That's true. So, so um, the last thing is, let's say you can't find a better job. So you're just like frustrated. You got to get a side hustle. Mm. Got to, you got to do something. I mean, a hundred dollars a month, two hundred dollars a month, five hundred dollars a month, it a thousand dollars a month is twelve thousand dollars a year. Mm. Find a side hustle. You know, I've got this 21-year-old girl that went through my class and she's been struggling, man. And I keep telling her, quit worrying about going out with your friends at night. You can't pay your bills. Mm. I don't care if you have to work two jobs. We've all struggled when we were young, all of us. Yeah. Well, except for, you know, the people who's got rich parents. Okay. But even like my kids, mm -hmm. my kids are in college right now. They're 19 and 21. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to, they're going to have to go to work. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, this is my money. <laughs> it mm. isn't our money. Mm. It's my money, you know? Mm. So um th that's that's yeah. what i do i just yeah. try to get people thinking the right way and yeah. then i'm here for them. i'm always yeah. here for them. yeah so I, I would love to ask them um, you, you were retired before and but now you're back you're out of retirement again to teach people how to you know be financially free so um how can we best prepare ourselves financially for retirement one more time what was that like uh, from your experience of, you know, being retired and now, you know, coming back out to teach other people how to be financially free. I would just love to know, you know, apart from everything you've talked about so far, which are very, very important and very um, useful for us. How can we also, you know, furthermore prepare ourselves for a financially free retirement age? Oh, an age? Well, you've yeah. got to determine that. I think it's getting closer to 70 today. Mm. You know, um, now, I'm not saying we can't have a goal to retire at 55 or 60, you know, but, you know, don't hold it against yourself if you can't do it till you're 65 or 70. Mm -hmm. um, some people will never retire. I can't retire. I'm, you know, I was retired for one year. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I built a company, I sold it and I was retired. You know, mm -hmm. I had a couple million that had grown from my program. Mm. And then I had some more from when I sold my business. Mm. And I was like, Oh, my God, every day's a Saturday. It's <laughs> like people would ask me, how was your weekend? Yeah. And I would think, well, wait a minute, well, what day is it? Oh, because every day is a weekend. <laughs> but it actually gets boring. Mm. And especially if you're a guy who's always been driven his life with goals. Mm. Okay, and I have. I've been a goal setter for since I was 25 years old. And um, that's why I came out of retirement and said, you know, my financial freedom program during COVID, I was bored out of my tree. I, it was like, you know, what the hell? This is boring. I don't want to watch net. I don't want to be watching soaps during the day. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's like, and so I actually, I had a right, I had a 17 and 18 at the time, 17 and 18 year old. I put a PowerPoint presentation and I wanted to show my kids how to become multimillionaires mm. by working in a normal job. And I got it all done. I had this beautiful PowerPoint because I've done a lot of PowerPoints in my career. So I, I can pretty good at it. And before I showed it to my kids, I says, I want you to invite your friends over to the living room and tell them that your dad, who's a multimillionaire, is going to teach them how to become a multimillionaire. Mm. So I did my first program maybe two and a half years ago, two, two and a half years ago, in my living room. And I had to PowerPoint on my big screen TV. And I blew these kids away. It was like, holy smoke, I can do that? Yeah. But what blew me away more is the realization that our children aren't being taught how to one day be able to do what they want, when they want, and how they want. And we're in a capitalistic society mm. where, uh, I mean, the American dream has always been, if you're willing to work your ass off and don't give up, 
you can become a multimillionaire. And a lot of us have done it in America and around the world, actually. And so that's what all of a sudden I realized, oh my God, that I could, I could help there. Yeah. That's how I could get out of being bored. Mm -hmm. And that's why I developed a complete online course. I'm really proud of what I put together. I think what differentiates my course between everybody else's, my course is simple design that an 18 year old can understand it. And when a person gets done, their financial freedom plan is set up and running on autopilot. Yeah. And I think that's powerful. I'm not just telling them how to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm helping them do it in class. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I'm excited about what I'm doing. I got so much passion for this. I'm, I'm so excited about it also. <clears throat> like for people out there who would love to join this online course or get across to you, contact you, or maybe ask you some more questions. What's the best way of doing this? What's the best way of signing up for your course and also reaching out to you? Okay. The best thing to do is all they got to do. It's real simple. Go to my name howarddeckers.com. Last name is D-E-K-K-E-R-S.com. Mm. Uh, they can get a half hour free training right there. They can sign up right there. Um, but I'll teach them some really good stuff on how money grows in that free training. And it'll blow some people's mind when they see how money really grows. Mm. Um, and then there's also a Calendly link that they can click. Mm. And if they want to schedule a 15 minute meeting with me before, they sign up. Awesome. Great. Do it. Yeah. I'm here for them. Yes. Uh, once they sign up, they can click that link anytime they want and I'll mm -hmm. be there for them. So just go to howarddeckers.com and uh, if they want to email howarddeckers at gmail.com. It's all simple stuff. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and that's it. Yes, it's, that's beautiful. Uh, yes. That's so awesome. I'm going to place all of this information in the show notes of this episode. And I encourage everyone who is listening, has listened so far, should, um, you know, click on the links, get across to our, listen to the um, first 30 minutes video that is, is on his website. Yeah, it's very inspiring. And also sign up for the course. That would be so wonderful. And um, I, I wish everyone could have, you know, financial freedom also and retire in a wonderful state financially too. Thank you so much, Howard, for everything you taught me in this episode. I really appreciate the stories, the uh, lessons, and the, the tips and the you know, uh, methods of becoming financially free. Thank you so much. Hey, Toby, it's been great. I'm here to help anybody who wants to help. And anybody who's willing to, to, willing to put a little bit of effort into it, I'm here for you.